Hello, you guys, and welcome to the Woman's Cave, Woman's Cave, Woman's Cave. Yeah, I don't know why I'm singing it today. Hold on, one more time. Woman's Cave, Woman's Cave, Woman's Cave. What's the dance? Yeah, there you go. Look, even my, even my guest is taking part. I'm feeling a little bit like we should have a literary dance off. Yeah, I yeah, think so. Should... Yep, at the beginning of every show, literary dance off it is. Anyway, let me get moving because we have a really cool guest today. Say that about every, nope, no, I don't. I say we have an important guest or a nice guest, but never has a really cool guest. You're our first cool guest. Wow, Is thank you. you. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so, okay, I should probably talk about books. Oh, and my, I'm well known, by the way. I can remember to introduce myself. Hi, folks, to me. I feel like I'm semi professional today. Well done. Semi. One eye. One eye for the semi. Anyway, chatting up. Because that was not funny. I'm getting corny now. Books! The wonderful ladies who wrote, And I Thought Divorce Was Bad with Other Life Lessons. I said the whole title, which means I must not be feeling well. And I thought being grown up was easy. Oh, wait, no, I have them out of order. And I thought I could juggle it all. We thought we could, and we found out we couldn't. Go figure. And I thought, oh, there is Jade's favorite one. And I thought I did my journey alone. By the way, you might notice there's no Jade. I think this going to be a habitual thing where she just doesn't show up and does her reshoots on Friday. She's going to be like, yeah, the podcast reshoot for the TV show. We'll talk about that in a minute. And I thought I had it all figured out. We thought we did, but we didn't. And by the way, Hollywood, this adorable face with the one eye, it's a good one, good one, needs a TV show. This is a script. Make it into a TV show. Don't change a word. Even the words that are misspelled, just have them say them the way they are. And that's how you know it's a joke. Because uh, Hollywood will never give that much control to a writer. So, and then we have, and I thought he was the one, and yeah, we all know one of those, or she. And then we have our new series, is The Misfit Guys, The Sassy Sway That Leaves Crooked Footprints. I mess this up every week. I'm going to give myself a high five if I finish this one. And then we have the the next one from that one is the Misfit Guys, the Cocktail Soirees, and the LDD. Just in case you're wondering what it is, it's a cocktail recipe book, the poetry and life lessons. Yeah, now you don't want to buy it because it's life lessons. Ha! Read those while you're tipsy. Go figure that one out. There are also the editors of the 25 hottest indie authors, artists, and advocates. And last, almost last but not least, and I thought the workbook. Okay, time for my favorite part of the show. Besides when I get to be more narcissistic and pretty. I don't know when that is. When my makeup artist comes in, maybe. But anyway, my favorite part of the show is Just Right in Life. It is our docu-series. And yes, you guys, we have started season two. And season two is, start, is available now. Season two, episode one, is available now on Amazon. No, they did not put it correctly. It's like an addition to season one. So it literally is like season one, episode seven. And I'm like, "Mm mm-mm, I asked for season two, episode one. But that's okay. That's okay. Maybe season one wasn't long enough. We'll just make it longer. Whatever. I'll I'll go with it. Anyway, you're not here to hear about us. Wait, did I finish everything? Nope. I forgot website. You can get all our books on Amazon.com, BarnesandNobles.com, and AndWeThought.com. And you can follow everything that we're doing, including the book festival, August 31st, and the Las Vegas Writers Retreat, because who wants to write in Vegas? I do, for 15 minutes. Now, wonderful guest, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, I'm Mer Lafferty. I'm a podcaster and writer and science fiction uh, editor. And science fiction writer. I didn't uh, attribute that correctly. Anyway, and uh, I have a book called Six Wakes, which is award nominated. I've lost several this year. Not lost. There's two I haven't lost yet. And um, that's up for science fiction awards. And I have another book based on my podcast called I Should Be Writing. I did not know we were holding books up to the camera, so I did not come prepared. Do you want to run and go get one? Sure, I can I can reach back there. Just I'll go get one. Yeah. Did she say my prepared? She has the books on her book show. She's good to go. I don't see a copy of I Should Be Writing Around, but this is six wakes. I try not to get the glare in there. Awesome. Okay, so Call me semi unprepared today, which I should never admit. I've been told by many a professional person who's done it for 20 plus years never admit you're unprepared. I'm unprepared! 
Oh, okay. I am prepared all the time. Yes, this is one of the reasons I can do this with you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Because I did not know about the sci fi book. I knew about uh, I Should Be Writing, and I knew about the podcast, which you've been doing a very long time. So I was prepared with three questions about you. Okay. Now I'm intrigued by science fiction. Please tell us why you take that genre. I was pretty much a voracious reader when I was a kid, but it wasn't until I read science fiction that writing is something I wanted to do. I mean, I'd read all the kids books I could get my hands on, but you know, it, it was writing was never a career I wanted to go for until I started reading about dragons and spaceships. So I'm that's sorry, why. Did you say spaceships? Dra dragons and spaceships. Please tell me you marry the two together on a regular basis. No, but uh, author Anne McCaffrey has. So. Okay. Yeah, I just show. I'd have been taking it like, yeah, I know my next book, Dragon Space. <laughs> You're such a better person than I. <laughs> okay, so what is your actual sci-fi book about? My book is a murder mystery in space about clones who wake up among their own dead bodies and realize one of them was the killer, but they don't know which one of them did it, including the killer. So they have to solve their own murders, and everything's falling apart in the ship around them too. Oh, this is nice. Is there an audio book? Mm hmm I narrated it. Yep. Really? Yeah. That? That? It's hard as heck. You didn't tell me whether I could swear on this, I assume not. Um it's it's exhausting. Uh I started out podcasting my fiction back in two thousand six and seven, but that's like, oh I'm gonna do a chapter tonight and release one chapter a week. No, recording an audiobook is like standing up for four or five hours reading constantly. And you never think how much that's going to drain you, but it does a lot. So, um, audio, about an 85,000 word audiobook can be recorded in two, three days. Um, four, if you want to give your narrator a little bit of breathing room, but uh, it, is, it is a tough process. And a very, very tough process. Uh, I, that's the way, I'm gonna see if I can find it. Anyway, I did Journey Alone, and mm -hmm. that took forever. And then it was like, oh, it's not good enough, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Why do I even bother? And then I did some books from some other friends of ours, just, you know, just for kicks and giggles. I was like, hey, I'm pretty decent at reading, let's give this a shot. And then I was like, yeah, this is not my career calling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Things again, just let it go to voicemail. It's not my, it's not my calling. Anyway, um, thank you for sharing about that process first sure. and foremost. But so many people out there want audio books, and they're like, "Oh, I'm gonna narrate it," and I'm like, "Ooh," and they're like, "What's wrong?" And I'm like, "Nothing. Narrate your book." <laughs> You'll see. Yeah. Okay. Moving on, and not being as mean and vindictive as I am with the you see. Um. Now let's talk about podcast because you're okay. amazing. Thank you. Okay, first of all, how many awards do you, have you been up for? My uh, podcasting awards have I been up for? About nine, I think. I had a very, what? very, very rich year of being nominated for some of my fiction, my podcast, and the video podcast I did with my kid. We didn't win any of them, but that was that was a chunk right there. Um, no, sorry, maybe 11, because I forgot the, the Hugo Award started awarding for podcasts, and uh, me and my co-author were nominated for Best Fan Cast last year and this year, but uh, yeah, I've, I've won the Parsec Award a couple of times, uh, the Podcast Peer Award, and in 2015, I was inducted into the uh, Podcast Academy Hall of Fame. I'm looking over at my trophies over there, which is why I keep looking because I'm trying to see what I have over there. I had a joke about it anyway. I was <laughs> like, she, she so many awards she can't remember. She's like, wait, I gotta count. One, two, three. It's wait. Trying to remember. <laughs> I'm trying to remember how many I've lost. You said how many have I been up for, not how many have I won. Exactly. Exactly. Because, I mean, I, I knew you didn't win some, but I was counting, and I was like, oh, my goodness, this woman has a lot, and I want some. 
So um, you want to swap careers? No. Well, no one ever... I don't think I can pull off that lipstick. That's what gets me. I, I'm not. I'm not good with makeup, and I could not make what you're doing work like you do because it's awesome. And your earrings, dude, those are awesome. Thank you. Oh my goodness, my stylist will be ever so happy, and my makeup artist who gave me emergency lipstick. This is literally my emergency lipstick. She was like, oh, wow. put it in your jewelry. I was like, I can't find my other one, so I just open up my jewelry box with my earrings and my necklaces that I just throw on. And um and some extra ribbons and I'm like oh this works. <laughs> Is that where you keep the emergency lipstick? I'm gonna put mine in there. Yeah, it's like one box and you just pop. It's just like I have a ton, so you just that one's the emergency box. Nice. It's got my awards make. It has my awards lipstick and my awards jewelry and ribbons, and then it has my stage stuff like two signature looks. I nice. hate to pay stylists, so I just tell them to give me signature looks. So there you go. I don't have to pay you over and over again. <laughs> Pray three, six, look, I'm done. Okay. Anyway, well, off of me, back to you again. So why did you start your podcast and how did it feel like taking people along and getting popular on your, taking people along on your journey? Let me finish the first, the second question. And then let me add the third question. How does it feel growing in popularity? Um, Gosh, it's a weird thing. I started podcasting when there were probably fewer than a thousand podcasts. Um, we were all just looking around for RSS feeds to follow because we were all very excited about this new media and how people were getting involved in it and wanted more and more. Um, so I was just kicking around ideas, lots of different ideas. But uh, in 2005, there was, to my knowledge, I always say to my knowledge, because I expect someone's going to come up from the, the, some obscure thing and say, no, 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 I was before you. But to my knowledge, there was only one writing podcast out in 2005, and that was The Secrets by Michael A. Stackpole. And that was um, some really great advice, but it was told from the point of view of a um, really veteran, excellent professional writer. And while he was giving a lot of good advice, he was not addressing a lot of the problems I was having, which was, you suck. That rejection means that you are blacklisted from that magazine forever. You should quit. All of these anxieties that just hammer writers. And I've seen so many people quit because they're afraid of people in their writing group plagiarizing them, or they don't want to, uh, get an agent because they afraid, they're afraid they're going to steal from them. Or, I mean, just, just so many, a lot of beginning authors problems are not show don't tell they're emotional. So I, I was not good enough. I was not good enough to sell anything yet, but I was good enough to know what hurdles I was coming across was just something I could jump over or walk around or use whatever metaphor you want here. But, um, I just wanted to talk about how, if you just keep going, then you probably will succeed. And people don't succeed usually because they quit. Um, let's see, how did it feel getting popular? That is a weird question because I probably have more listeners now, but back then because there were fewer podcasters, overall I was a lot better known when it came to podcasting. Now, there are corporate podcasts. A lot of the media um, groups, NPR, et cetera, are putting out their own podcasts. A lot of people are managing to get their podcasts picked up by a corporation. So some people want to do a science fiction podcast, but then suddenly, boom, they're the official science fiction podcast of this magazine, and, and they're sudden hugely popular. And I have not done any of that. I've just kind of plodded along. So I think my, my popularity as a podcaster was a lot bigger several years ago simply because it's so full now um i went to the podcast academy hall of fame uh ceremony in 2015 and i was very honored and um but i could tell not a lot of people knew who i was or cared and it's like i'm sure they were just going well 
who is that? What has she done? Why haven't I heard her name before? But I mean, partly it was because I'd been doing it for so long and, and influenced a lot of other shows. And so it, it's a weird thing of, of, I haven't changed much, but podcasting has. And so my view of my popularity has kind of changed, but, but that's okay. Cause my goal in life was to be a writer. So I've been working on that career. So. So you're saying that we have, well, we, uh, I guess I'm going to go with what run DNC and if you're a rap person, you know what I'm talking about, but I think it's part of like culture now, but before them, there was like cameo and before them, there was a bunch of small New York ba- uh, places, uh, little groups that um had rap and now you go who what <laughs> yeah but there were really sounding people in that genre there's just you can't you can't do anything without them so it's weird and I, I fear that that day that will be us one day it literally wakes me up out of my sleep <laughs> <laughs> that will definitely be us we'll no longer be the innovative folks we'll be the folks that other people learn from and moved on and did bigger and greater and better things instead of being the person that helped create and so I'm always afraid and um, thank you so much for making me um, look at that fear head on now. So I'm going to go cry into like a rum bottle because I don't have anything other than rum to drink today. Thanks. That's Rum's even good. Good. I like rum. The, I it, only it, like the pina colada. I'm sorry. It's a, I mean, it is a tough thing, but every time, every time I look hard at my numbers and every time I look hard at, uh, just for an example, like Twitter followers, I start thinking about all the details that I don't have control over. And that's when I get upset. It's like, some somebody says, oh, I lost 45 Twitter followers after that last tweet. I'm like, you're watching that? that that's like, that, that sounds like me having myself with a thumbtack over and over again watching my followers go up and down or watching my subscriber numbers go up and down. It, it, it sounds like it's, it's, it does nothing, but makes me feel bad. Um, what I try to focus on is making good content. And, and as long as people are still listening and as long as people are still telling me that, that my show does something for them, um, I'll keep doing it. Well, your show does something for the end. I thought ladies, although that doesn't really mean anything because we're not really like awesome. Go! <laughs> sure you are. You're totally awesome. In our own right, I guess. In our own right, yeah. But we're not like awesome, awesome. Like you being a founder or other people. I don't know the podcasting world that well. I just have one. I don't know it well anymore. It, it felt like much a much bigger community a while ago. And now those of us who are still creating are kind of doing it in our own little circles, which is sad, but, you know, stuff evolves. All right, I'm sorry. It's the first time by far, and I'm thoroughly enjoying this conversation and have no desire to stop. Um, <laughs> I talk too much. It's the, it's the podcaster part. Sorry. No, it's fine. It is fine. We have to have you back just to talk about your book. Maybe you can join us on the Writers' Roundtable this year. Sure, I'd love to. That would be awesome. Or you could join us on the Hollywood Producer Roundtable because you are a producer of a podcast, so it'd be nice to have the audio side. Just sure. visual. All right. Well, anyway, can you tell everyone where to find your podcast, where to find your books and everything like that? Um, well, my name is Mer Lafferty and uh, nobody else has that name. So if you search for me, you can pretty much find everything. My website is merverse.com. And um, yeah, you can search for I Should Be Writing or my other show, which is more about the uh, business of writing called Ditch Diggers. Um, that I do with Matt Wallace. Those are both available on most podcast networks. Um, yeah, and and I am editor of podcast science fiction magazine, Escape Pod, which is escapepod.org. We uh, deliver free fiction every week from some pretty awesome science fiction writers. Awesome. Oh. Thank you, Ms. Lafferty, for coming on our show. I mean, considering that you practically founded the foundation that we're standing on not exactly <laughs> you know 
Because you seem like like the second person there. That's pretty cool. You're not Neil Armstrong, but you know, you're the one who not Neil Armstrong off of me. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's it like to be that guy? You walk on the moon and yet nobody remembers your name anyway, but you're like, I know somebody else was up there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you guys, I want to thank you so much for being with us today. And yeah, I'm, I'm always messing this up as we come to the end because I don't do introductions and I don't do the end because that is Jade's job if she's ever here. Jade, will you ever come back? Okay. No. Anyway, uh, I hope her reshoots do wonderful. And I don't know why we're doing reshoots this year. We still don't look like crap on the show. So whatever. Anyway. I am Winona, and Jade, the missing Jade, is not here today, and we are two of your anti-thought ladies. Please, you guys, go to andwethought.com and check everything out that we're doing, meaning the Thoughtful Book Festival on August 31st, and the Writers' Retreat in Las Vegas on October 10th and 11th. And when you go to the andwethought.com, go to the ladies' page and go to the middle of the page. you got a promotion from the tippity bottom to the middle. <laughs> and um, support the charities that we proudly support. There are three of them. They do wonderful work, and they always are in need of support. So please give them a little cash, energy, money, and a little thank you note to say thank you for what you do. There you go. So I'm going to wrap this up by saying that wisdom is all around us if we're open to finding it and accepting it. So peace and love, you guys, from Winona and the Missing Jade. Bye-bye.